What's up dudes? Welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be working on the 64 bug build. I think this video is going to come out after we've already taken it to the dirt. But in this video we're going to be addressing some more problems that I'm having with the car right now. Um, recently when I've been driving it after a while, um, I'll put it in neutral when I'm coming to a stoplight and the thing will just stall out and it'll be backfiring and idling rough. And I thought this issue was initially the points in the condenser and the distributor. So I already went ahead and replacing and replaced those. And it helped with just how the car ran, but it didn't help with this issue. One of the times that this issue was occurring, I actually went to the back of the car and opened the lid and checked in there. And on my current oil breather setup, there's actually oil bubbling out of the breather. Um, so that's not good. I did some more research on that and people were linking that um, to the backfiring and the misfiring on the car. The reason this happens is that the motor just builds too much crankcase pressure and just shoots the oil through the breather so maybe it just can't breathe enough so what i went ahead and did is actually got a legit breather setup which i'll show you right now this is an empty oil breather kit what it comes with is the hose to actually run your lines and then this is the oil breather itself inside of here there's like a metal baffle and then some foam and then here's some hose clamps right here and then we also have some fittings for the actual hose itself and the way this works is that we're gonna have to tap into both the valve covers and then we're gonna put these fittings on there and we'll run the hose up. This actually gets mounted above the fan and the motor. And then all of our lines will run from the valve cover into this actual breather. And we're also gonna run, rather than the setup that I have for the oil breather currently, we're gonna run that hose from the actual fill cap into this as well. So we'll have three points going into here. So the motor's just gonna be able to breathe a little bit more and hopefully it won't spew oil. And in this box, it'll sit in here with that metal baffle and the foam won't allow it to kind of go anywhere. It'll drain back into the motor eventually. So we're not just spitting out oil like we are on this setup. Um, so let's go over to the car and I'll show you the setup that's actually in there right now. Here's the current breather setup on the car. This is something that I made um, from factory. It'll actually run from here into the oil bath or whatever you have. And even on these aftermarket air filters, there's a port on the back that I have plugged off. And that's so you can run this hose into there. And so what I did is I actually made a separate one with a separate filter on here. I actually mounted it off the doghouse. You can tell that the filter's a little bit wet right now, and that's from the issue we've been having where the oil comes up and just spews out of this thing. So hopefully we'll be able to get that resolved. The first step to actually getting this thing fixed is to remove the old setup, and then we can start planning out and routing the new setup. Step one is complete. I got that old breather set up all off the motor. I actually covered this port right here up with duct tape. If you're gonna have any port to the motor open at any point on any vehicle, you definitely wanna keep that covered up. You don't want dirt or anything going down into the motor because that'll cause super bad problems that you do not wanna deal with. So just keep those things covered up if you're gonna have them open for a while. Coming back to the table in the garage, you can tell I have everything completely organized on the table here. Um, I just wanted to point out on this box itself what's inside. You heard me earlier say there's a baffle and foam and that's exactly what it is. So in the box itself, this would go down first and then the foam over it and then this actual empty cover would bolt on on top. But in this, you can tell I already started getting these fittings on there. And before I put the last one in, I just wanted to check what actual drill bit size it is that fits in there. So I just went through a couple sizes and this is the closest one I have, just a 5 8 uh, drill bit. And that's the closest thing. It's very, very, very slightly bigger than this, but I don't think we're gonna have a problem because of this. It'll have enough surface area to grab, so I think we'll be fine with the 5 8 on the valve covers. So I've been doing some research and looking at the car just to decide where I wanna mount this oil breather box. And I've come up with a mount on the firewall here. I actually cut out part of like the mesh or the cardboard that's up on the firewall, and I'm gonna mount it in this area right here. I have a nut cert on here because that's how I'm going to be mounting it. So you can kind of get an idea of how this works. This piece gets pressed into the actual firewall and then it'll just be a quarter 20 bolt bolting it on. And this is very similar to how we mounted the mirrors. We did those with nut certs as well. And we did a full tutorial on how to use one of these in that video. Um, so if you don't really know how to use one of these, go check that video out. I'll put the link in the description. But here's the nut search we're using, just quarter 20. So I'm going to hold this up there, um, kind of just put a Sharpie in here so I know where I need to put the holes, drill it, press the nutsert in, and then we can actually bolt this oil breather box up on the firewall.
It's a new day. Last night I wrapped up getting that actual breather box mounted on the firewall. So this is completely mounted now. This is in there solid. Um, and then I just went ahead and got this first line already made since this was a really simple one. Um, I'll walk you guys through the other ones, but I just did this one off camera. It's just coming from the, the fill cap up to this front port on the box. And then I just heat shrinked the actual hose clamps on there. So now I'm gonna do these outer two, which go down to the valve covers. So first step is gonna be pulling the valve cover and actually drilling the hole to put the port on the valve cover and then we can start making the hoses for it. I went ahead and got the driver's side valve cover off and I've already marked it right here. You can kind of see it right there for the actual port. It's the same port that we put on the actual oil breather box. So when it's all situated, it'll be something like that. And this is as if you were looking at it from the driver's side. So this hose will go up across the motor and then into the side of the breather box. I made the mark on there by actually just using this punch. Um, this thing's kind of getting worn, so it's a little bit difficult, but I, that's what I used to just kind of pinpoint it. And it clicked in and made that little divot on here. Um, so I'm just gonna start stepping up with the drill bits and then actually get this port in there. I'm gonna adjust the valves while the valve covers are off, just to make sure everything's kosher. Then we should be able to slide everything back together. Getting the port on this valve cover was really easy. Uh, it was just a matter of drilling that hole and everything's nice and sealed now. I wanted to go right here up at the top because if you think about it, all the oil in the valve cover is usually at the bottom because of gravity. So it's usually not at the top. And I didn't want to put it at the back because if I'm going up a hill or accelerating, all the oil is going to be wanting, wanting to push to the back. Um, so the worst spot would be right here and best spot's going to be up here. So that's why I chose this location. To get this actually in there, it's just, a three quarter inch nut so I had two wrenches to actually get this thing snug on there and turned out really good. One thing to note is that when you're drilling this thing you get a bunch of metal flakes in here so definitely 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 clean every single one of them out of here. A little sparkling water action. Just got those valve covered valve covers back on the motor itself and adjusted all the valves to six thousandths. The next step is going to be getting the hose made from the actual valve cover up to the breather box. To do that I'm going to first connect the hose to the bottom fitting on the cover and then just run it on the route that I want. And then I'm actually just gonna estimate where to cut it, cut it, and then that line will be done. I'm gonna have to do the same for this side, except that one's gonna be a little bit different. It'll be longer since it's coming from this side and it'll go on the back side of the doghouse right here and then go in right there. On all the hose clamps I'll be using, I'll be putting heat shrink on them like I already did on this one. So I'll show you guys how to do that as well, at least my method, and maybe you can apply it to your setup as well. So I got my line and my cutters. Like I said, first step's gonna be hooking up to the valve cover. So I'm gonna do that and then route the line back through here and over to this side. So the bottom side's on now. Let's bring it up over here. We can just estimate how long this needs to be and then cut it and then if it needs to go shorter, we can make it a little bit shorter. You don't want to make it too short off the bat, so if you don't really know exactly where it's going to be, definitely go long before before you go short. <laughs> All right, so there's our first cut. Just throw this off to the side, and then we can run this up, and get it on our actual port, right there, and bam, that line's made. It's as easy as that. I don't think I need to go any shorter. It's routed pretty nicely. Make sure there's no kinks in this line. I think that's one of the reasons why the one I had before going to here wasn't working properly because when it bent right here, there's a kink in the line. So be cautious of that and try not to get any kinks. I got that other hose all fitted and put on there. So now we're gonna heat shrink things. To do that, I'm gonna first establish how long the actual heat shrink needs to be. They're all gonna be the same for these hose clamps since we're running the same size hose and ports. So we'll just have to do this once and we'll cut out a whole bunch of pieces of heat shrink for all the hose clamps. So the first one, this one's gonna be the easiest, so that's why I'm using this one. I'll pull the hose off, slide the hose clamp over, maybe get it close to tight, and then we'll actually put this back over the port all the way. And then it needs to loosen up a little bit. Right there, all the way up on there. And then we'll tighten this thing down to where we're actually gonna have it once everything's said and done. So right there, these things don't have to be incredibly tight. At the end of the day, all they're doing is holding this hose onto the port. There shouldn't be a great deal of pressure in there so you don't have to clamp them down ridiculously. Um, so now we're gonna take a marker and actually mark right here and that's gonna be the length for our heat shrink. Um, that way you're not going and you're gonna actually pull the heat shrink into the clamp. 
Um, so right here, we know exactly where it has to be, so we'll mark that and cut all of them out. Right there. So here's our clothes clamp that we actually marked on the car. And you can see I've kind of just flattened it out. Then I actually went ahead and already cut all of our pieces of heat shrink, but I'm gonna tell you how I do that. I stick it in right here in this little groove, and then I'll go above and then get it to where it's on the line, and then that's where I'll cut it, and that's how you know how to get the right cut. Um, that's kind of my little trick. And then to actually get these on, slide it over. Make sure you get under the actual bolts right there. Just right there is where we need to be, up to the collar all the way. Um, so now just take your normal lighter, and then what I do is I go under. If you go over, you might see where you're actually burning it with the lighter, so if you go under, you're never gonna see that. Um, so I'll just start usually at the end, get that shrunk up and kind of work my way down. And then see if this hot, I usually switch, do this side. And then you're just working it slowly. So get that burnt in, get that all shrunk up. starting to get there this it was quite a bit or quite a big actual piece of heat shrink for this hose clamp so if you have one that fits a little bit better go with that one so there's our hose clamp all finished with the heat shrink on it I'll just run my finger across both sides to try and get black stuff off of it like that right there you can see it got on my finger um, I'll just wipe all that off and then our hose clamp is complete I'm gonna do the rest of these and then throw them on the car and we'll be all set there we go, all the hose clamps are now on there. And that's gonna conclude the installation of this breather box. This was a super fun little installation video. I'm glad I actually have this breather on the car now. Hopefully it fixes the issues I've been having with the rough idle installing out. If you're looking to do the same breather box on your car, it's super easy to install. If I wasn't filming, I probably could have done this in around two hours, it was super quick. Um, the hardest part, honestly, was just getting the nut certs and everything in the firewall that took the longest because i had to take off this deck lid and figure that all out but if you're just going to use self tappers or something super easy installation i wouldn't worry about it that's going to be it for this video though if you guys liked it please leave a like comment and subscribe and we'll see you in the next one deuces